Hi, welcome to TV Games. Uh, in case you're curious, the closet that I'm talking about did not literally explode. I decided to try clickbaity titles for the for a change. Uh, the other thing is, this video is going to be off the cuff again. I want to kind of show you what I've been doing in my back room over the past few months. Storage has always been an issue for me, and trying to find organization uh, setups that will make things easier to grab and still be kind of handsomely displayed is definitely a hurdle, uh, especially with the limited space of the closet I'm working with now. So I'm going to show you what I did there, show you some of the stuff on the shelf, and see if you get some ideas for your own collections. And uh, third thing is, the reason I'm not really doing a traditional video today is because I am dog sitting this weekend. Here's one right now who's just been kind of taking up space on my lap for no good reason. So here's the mess I'm working with right now. As you can tell, I completely gutted out everything that was in the back closet here and just drew it all over my futon and floor. So let's see what we have here. Oh, here's some DVDs. I like to keep my music uh, DVDs separate from everything else. Uh, Erg and Music War, which is a great collection. Schoolhouse Rocks, I don't guess that's kind of music. The Micro Giants, direct from Brooklyn. Whoa. Of course, Devo, Complete Truth About the Evolution, minus uh, Are You Experienced? So the laser disc is the only way to get that, or YouTube and a couple of Blur DVDs. So I'm using these Rubbermaid track, uh, the track system, I forget what they call it, Twin Track Brackets. So I've been using these brackets along with the five of these tracks and I actually have the official Rubbermaid shelves here which are a lot bigger than I need. So I actually did my own custom shelves. I bought smaller brackets and uh, I just got a couple of a few boards from Home Depot, $10 a piece. Uh, they're not the handsomest looking boards, but most of them are covered up anyway. I ripped the edge off of each one to make it it's at least seven and a half inches. I made it six and three quarter inches, I think. And then this is a three, three quarter inch cut off. Of course, a little, little bit less than that because of the kerf of the blade. And I added the back here. And the reason for that is that I don't want things to be kind of against the wall. Oh, I don't want things to be against the wall here. I want them to be against this. So this doesn't get in the way because if you leave it by itself, it's gonna it's gonna be all catawonky unless you straighten it by hand. And I kind of want it to be a no fuss system. Besides adding the back lip, I added these little perspex or plexiglass sides here. And the reason for that is when you want to put stuff towards the back, this will keep it on the shelf. So to speak so i mean yeah you could use a like a bookend or something but to be honest with you i think it's better to have this because bookends sometimes want to take a tumble too so uh on the sides here since i have a little bit more space first of all let's give it a little disco light here since i have a little bit more space uh these 50 dollars media shelves are going to be put to use and for that i'm going to put my loose cartridges the nes cartridges and some vhs tapes in case you were curious, um, these are rock music video from back in the 90s. I don't know if you remember these, but this was a subscription service that uh, they had different genres of music. There was like heavy metal, there was rap, there was, in this case, alternative. And they were around for a little while. And then I have some other tapes in here too. But not, these are not all my tapes. I still have some more and some PC box games, which are gonna be moved to the um, top shelf. Uh, what else? So we have some more box games that have to go on top here. I have pretty much every You Don't Know Jack game up to offline. A couple of Sim Cities, a few Sims. Uh, they've got the Lisa Suit Larry collection series, which is actually should be treated a little bit better because this is this is sought after now. That's the most complete collection. Some more Lisa Suit Larry, Yahtzee for some reason, Max Payne. This is a collection of Mad Magazines on DVD-ROM, which um, not as handsome as the previous release, which I have right here. Totally mad. This is supposed to come with a roll of toilet paper, but unfortunately it did not, for whatever reason. Oh, another music DVD. So, as you could kind of see, uh, my collection of box games gets a uh, priority over the loose games, which I've been actually putting in, uh, in these little plastic containers here. NES cartridges I might put on the shelves, but things like Atari and that's some, that's a C64, 
loose ColecoVision game, stuff like that, that's going to stay in the box because I feel like when you play um, those types of systems, you play games for five minutes and you kind of play a series of games. They're not long games. This is pretty much going to be the end of my collection. Uh, the only thing I really buy is box games from everything pre-NES. So I'm talking about like 2600, ColecoVision, the television, C64 game box, box games. Uh, those are the only things I really buy nowadays. I feel like for Nintendo, unless it's complete in box and something I love, I don't really need to go crazy spending money on these things anymore. Uh, but what I've been doing is every tote has a pre-set up um, arrangement of the consoles. So this way, if I want to play Dreamcast, for example, I'll just grab this box and everything that I need to play Dreamcast is in here. I don't know why I have two consoles, whatever. Same thing with the, with the GameCube. Whenever I want to play GameCube, I just take out this crate and I'll just plug it in. All the cables and the plugs are in here. Super Nintendo, I have it all set up, ready to go. PS2, regular NES. I got the uh, N64 down here. Xbox, I don't know how I fit that in there. So here's a lot of the stuff I still have to find homes for. Box electronic games you got here. You got a tape recorder. Um, I got my collection here of PC loose games. I remember this came in a box of Lucasfilm games, Star Wars games, the Rebel Assault 2, and I wish I still had that box, to be honest with you, but that, that got trashed a long time ago. No One Lives Forever, that fun little game from Sierra back in the 90s, first person shooter with a 60s mod vibe. This is the music CD that came with the Game of the Year edition, good to have. Of course, we got SimCity 4, Rush Hour. Hot Date, Sims 2, a lot of Sims stuff. I gotta say, I like The Sims in theory more than I like playing it. It's like, oh, that's cool. When you play it for a little while, it's like, okay, I'm done. Freedom Force is a game I've never sat down and played for a long time, but this was actually a very, very cool game, I remember. It was a very fun game. This was one of those things that came free with the joystick. How you guys doing? You guys good? Yeah, okay. Command and Conquer, Red Alert 2. Oh, here is the No One Lives Forever, the actual game. Warcraft 3, again, I don't I used to have a box for this. Oh, no, read the code. Uh, whatever, if you steal it, whatever. This is actually a fun collection, and I wish this got re-released. The Barker Brother card games. Game of Sorry, some Boggle. There's Neverwinter Nights Gold, which is cool because it actually has spaces for um, an unreleased um, expansion pack. So you have four discs and then a slot for hordes of the Underdark and Doom's Collector's Edition, which is fun because my father found this at his job. He works in New York City uh, as a concierge and this was in the trash. So it's like, you want it? Yeah. Everyone loves Doom. Some more example of my box games that I actually have been collecting. 8-bit computer combo 64 nonsense. Dreamhouse, which I have to give some love. I actually just bought the box. I had the disc already. Same thing for Mad Magazine, Spy vs. Spy. These are always my favorite, the Electronic Arts games, because they're like record albums when they did this back in the 80s. Marble Madness, not a great port, but I love the art on this. This is just insane. And by the way, in case you want to know who that is, that is Larry Reed and Will Harvey. All right, Skate or Die we have here, which is a great, great cover art. I love this. It's great to have these boxes, even if the discs don't work, which they do. So that's a good thing, but just the boxes themselves are just fun to have. All the things I've been buying are these TV game show uh, uh, releases. Uh, for my money, I want to say something. The 8-bit computer versions of Jeopardy are still, in my mind, the best versions of Jeopardy. I haven't played the PC versions as of late, but I remember just games went so much quicker on the computer because you could press a button for the category, press a button for the amount, and then you type in your answer and you're done. This is the Broderbund version of the Star Wars arcade game for the Combo 64, which is not a bad port. And of course, in case you're curious, this is Planet X2 from the 8-bit guy. And yeah, so I have two YouTube personality products on my shelf up here. You got the 8-Bit Guy and you have Pat the NES Punk with those two books. Down here we got some, we got some couple of sealed 
Ashki game, I'm sorry, Cosme games, Aztec Challenge, Forbidden Forest, great little early C64 games. You got Kickman. And this I found at a record store, oddly enough. <laughs> this is actually, uh, it's got a lot of stuff in here. Let me pull this out here. It's got loads and loads of documentation. Honestly, this is insane amount of documentation. So over here is kind of my laser disc collection, which I have to find a better space for. For the most part, I like the music stuff. This was cheap, like five, like ten dollars at a record store. Like here, what do we got in here? We got the eight inches. You got Kate Bush, you got Madonna. Got some interesting bootlegs here that I got from a group on Facebook, which is probably now defunct by the time you see this video. Um, someone made a tape of uh, "You Can't Do That on Television." Fun stuff. Uh, someone did a night of TGIF. Uh, someone took Threat Liable Midnight and turned it into a VHS tape from The Office. And a relatively simple bootleg, but the Double Darathon from the, I think it's from 1990. There actually is a date on there. September 3rd, 1990. And of course you got your expansion module number two, the Advantage, the Genesis stick, all that stuff. And Creepy Clown is hanging out over here, waiting to find a home. Uh, finally over here, I got this Quiz Whiz Challenge, which I had to find out at home. I think I've been through this already, but we've seen this before. This is my Game Boy cartridges and manuals. And in case you're curious, this Trapper Keeper here. These are the uh, trading cards I highlighted a few episodes ago. Mark and Mindy, you got some Alf in here. Is that Sergeant Pepper? I don't know what the hell that is. Oh yeah, that's Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. Damn, I didn't know I had those. That's a weird thing to have make cards out of. You kids on the block cards, of course. Yep. I collect those too. I collect a lot of crap. And of course the quiz whizzes. Oh, I forgot to use this guy. He is not talking right now, but this is Big Mouth Bubba. He squeezes his lips. He gets all indignant. It's funny. This stool, which is going to be moved downstairs to the garage, is from a nightclub in New York City called Polly Esther's which was a 70s bait like themed club. At any rate, this was Dave for TV Games and I'll see you next week.